In this video, we'll talk about the BJT operating in saturation mode. So here we have the NPN BJT. You may recall that in order to turn this transistor on, we have to forward bias the emitter base junction. So for a silicon BJT, that may imply a forward voltage applied of somewhere around 0.7 volts to forward bias that PN junction. Now for operation in active mode, you may recall that we need to reverse bias the collector base junction. So now let's consider what happens if we don't have an appropriate reverse bias there. If very small forward bias voltages are applied to the collector base junction, not much happens. The transistor continues to operate in active mode. It's only when this collector base junction is forward biased with, say, 0.4 volts or more, that an appreciable amount of forward current begins to flow through the collector base junction. When that happens, we see both junctions conducting appreciable current in the forward direction. The transistor is then said to be operating in saturation mode. Under these conditions, we still see current coming out the emitter as before. And out into the collector, most of it appears. But superimposed on that current arising due to the forward biased emitter base junction, we now see an additional component of current flowing through the forward bias base collector junction. So that flows in the opposite direction, out the collector for an NPN transistor. So it gives rise to a new term. ISC is the saturation current for this collector base junction. And this reverse current is equal to base collector voltage applied over VT. The base current now has an additional term too. It's equal to the original value we expect due to the forward biased emitter base junction. And it's also providing the current to the collector. So you can imagine that as the collector voltage drops, you can imagine an experiment where we vary this voltage drop. And around 0.4, we start noticing an appreciable decrease in the total collector current from the value we expect in active mode. And uh, it starts decreasing as this component of collector current increases. At the same time, the base current is increasing due to this second term. So the factor beta, which we think of as the ratio of base current to collector current in active mode is now changed in saturation mode because collector current drops, base current increases. So the apparent beta, or let's call it beta forced, will be less. So it's the ratio of the collector current and saturation over the base current and saturation. Since the collector currents dropped, the base currents increased, it's certainly less than the value of beta in active mode. And you'll notice it's not, it, unlike beta in active mode, it's not a constant. Beta forced will depend significantly on the precise amount of forward bias applied between base and collector. Now you may be imagining an extreme case here where both junctions are strongly forward biased and a lot of current is flowing into the base and out both end type regions. But the type of circuit configurations that the NPN transistor is connected into
generally won't allow that to happen. So that's not a case that we spend much time worrying about. But it is quite common to be in saturation mode and to observe a lower value of beta than what we expect in active mode. And again, we'll see that when the voltage between emitter and collector is only about 0.3 volts. So the voltage here will be about 0 0.3 volts at the onset of saturation and may drop a little bit further uh, all the way down to 0.2 volts, even perhaps 0.1 volt if we're deep in saturation. In those sort of circumstances, we would expect a very small value of beta forced. So here we've got a plot of collector current versus collector base voltage for constant emitter current. So the experiment here that would be used to obtain a plot like this might look something like this, an NPN transistor with the emitter down here and a forward bias VBE applied that keeps a constant current, let's call it uppercase IE flowing. Okay, And at the same time, the collector base voltage is being swept to obtain this plot. Now, as we play with VCB, we expect the collector current to change. And that's what's being plotted here. So we know that for positive values of VCB, the transistor will be in active mode and uh, the emitter current will be uh, swept to the collector and we'll see a relatively con constant collector current independent of the precise value of VCB applied. Again, as long as that collector base junction is reverse biased, we just get the constant current that's determined by the value of VBE. However, once VCB becomes negative, we start slightly forward biasing the collector base junction. And so therefore, once we get down to around minus 0.4 volts, that forward bias is large enough that an appreciable amount of current is noticed, enough that the observed collector current starts decreasing. And the collector current decreases as it's doing so. The base current is increasing to provide the missing uh, emitter current because you'll, again, remember the emitter current is being kept constant all through this plot. So if the collector current's coming down, something's got to be replacing it. And that's being replaced by extra base current. And then again, this will continue as long as we keep decreasing VCB uh, until at some point for large enough forward bias between uh, base and collector, the current could eventually drop all the way, all the way to zero. This may occur somewhere, you know, anywhere around negative 0.6, negative 0.7, maybe negative 0.8 or even nine, somewhere in this range. Right? So um, in saturation mode, you'll notice that, you know, as long as there's uh, you know, some current flowing in the collector, we know that the collector to emitter voltage drop is restricted within a pretty narrow range here. So, you know, at the onset of saturation, we see about 0.3 volts here. And uh, that may drop down to, let's say 0.1 for reasonable values of the collector current. And then, um, you know, it just starts getting, the collector current starts becoming very, very small. And again, the circuit configurations in which we use the NPN transistor generally don't allow, you know, negative currents to start flowing in the opposite direction. So um, these are not cases of, of much interest. So here's an appropriate model for the NPN transistor in saturation mode. You see um, that there are two components that are uh, that were also present in 
the model in active mode, this diode and this dependent current source. Um, but now there's the additional diode in the model to account for the forward current that can flow when the base collector junction starts to be forward biased. So you'll see now that the collector current in this model is the sum of the two terms we expect, the sum due to uh, the term due to the forward biased base emitter junction, and then a negative term due to this current here. And that's a, due to the slightly forward biased base collector junction. Um, the uh, emitter current has two terms uh, that add up to IS over alpha e to the VBE over VT. And uh, the base current now again has two terms. There's the term due, uh, the small fraction of the uh, collector current in active mode that we expect due to the forward bias between the base and emitter. And then the base now also has to provide um, this current here. So it's an added term, ISC e to the V, BC over VT. In fact, this model also captures the NPN's behavior in active mode. Since in active mode, the collector base junction would be reverse biased, and there'd be essentially no current uh, flowing through DC. The PNP transistor also can be in saturation mode. Again, this would arise when the base emitter junction is forward biased. In this case, that requires uh, the opposite polarity between base and emitter. Um, and uh, we'll see saturation mode as the collector base junction starts to become forward biased. So we'll start seeing, a no no we may start seeing a noticeable current somewhere around 0.4 volts, which implies um, for the PNP that the collector is somewhere around 0.3 volts below the emitter and you know, would stay in saturation as the collector drops further from there. So just as before, we see an increase in base current once we enter saturation. We've got the same two terms for the base current as before. the term due to the forward bias VBE, and then a term in the opposite direction due to the emerging forward bias between uh, collector and base. Actually, I should uh, reverse the notation here because it's the emitter base voltage. Um, that gives rise to the forward bias. Okay, and as before, the collector current also has two terms now. It's got the same term that it had in active mode, and it's got a new term due to the forward bias collector base junction. So that uh, current, collector current, starts dropping from its active mode value as uh, VCB increases. And we could uh, we observe a plot just like we did for the NPN transistor, except again, just noting that we've reversed the polarity of IC here. And we'd have to also reverse the polarity of the uh, x-axis in that plot.